because that's kind of where the rubber hits the road. That's where you work out how can you use money and how can you use this as a direct placement. And I, and I, I kind of, for this to, for me, for this to be a success, you've got to make this as easy as physical cash mm -hmm. in terms of its usability. I always kind of use my grandparents as, could I give them crypto today and allow them to use it to go and pay for their grocery? Very difficult. So we need to sort of make sure that this, it's, there's low friction in this for it to drive adoption because you have the best technology in the world. If it's not usable, it won't get adopted. And so I think that's also the balancing act here of we've got this very, very cap capable, capable technology and a real opportunity is to make sure that we do it in a, in a responsible and right way that actually people see the benefits for it and actually want to use it. So if you're a techie watching this, what can you do? You know, there's lots of things that can be built on on a native crypto ledger like XRP ledger that we're going to use in our lives for this. So I'd say get involved, um, start building things on XRP ledger. So that's if you're a techie. And if you're a business person or just a normal human um, watching this, get involved in these discussions because too many people and too many of my friends say, oh, CBDCs are going to do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And I'd say 99% of them are factually incorrect. Let's have these open discussions about our privacy, have the open discussions about where it should work, mm -hmm. and then we can innovate, and then we can do amazing things with this. So really, you know, my, my message is get involved in this. Don't let it happen to us. Let's really, you know, be part of it together. Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And in that intro, you first heard from Anthony Rouse. He's a huge contributor to the cross-border solution RippleNet. And also, he contributed to the rules for the standards body of the ISO 2022. Following him was Anthony Welfare, and he made a key point, 99% of people who talk about CBDCs are factually incorrect. And his second point is you should be getting involved, whether you're a developer or just, as he said, a normal human being. And it's much easier to do with this new launch today of the XRP Ledger Learning Portal. It's amazing. Whether you are getting started with blockchain or you want to learn how to code on the XRP Ledger, there are three free courses, two of which are for beginners. And then the third one is an intermediate level where you can actually learn how to code. When you pass the course, you earn an achievement. And after I completed this first course, it was, yeah, left me feeling, wow, that was fun. There's a touch of gamification to it. It's an excellent method to transfer knowledge. And You'll love the touch of humor in some of the multiple choice questions for the quiz. I'll put a link to it in the description below. And if you've been in this space for any length of time, I think the estimated completion time of 120 minutes is very generous. I did it in half that. This next story is quite funny. The price of the crypto token that was promoted by Kim Kardashian spiked 126% after the SEC charge was unveiled yesterday. <laughs> so Gary Gensler, yeah, he is pumping the altcoins. The token is called Ethereum Max. And just so you can get a visual on the chart, this was the pump. If you listened to my video yesterday, you'll remember I talked about John Deaton taking a swipe at Max Kaiser because he's got XRP on his mind 24 by 7. Well, there's a lot of media that thought that was pretty funny. And what's even funnier is Max just can't stop. This is what he put out today. It was this image on how to survive lightning adoption as an S-coiner. Lightning is part of the Lightning Network, which is a layer two solution to moving Bitcoin. Poor Max just shouldn't be that confident. This is a two minute clip you really wanna to listen to. It is of the Lightning Network limitations told by four Bitcoin Lightning Network devs. This is real honest developer talk, not some ludicrous maxi talk. And I hope for Bitcoin adoption because I own Bitcoin. The XRP ledger, however, does a dang good job at getting Bitcoin 
closer to adoption and spend the bits is harnessing that technology have a listen the name of today's event is lightning limitations about lightning shortcomings so we can address them yeah lightning does not scale that far you know as liquidity is primarily going in one direction throughout the network um you have people rebalancing by actually going to chain so we're back to this world where we're talking about compressing uh transactions to get them on chain certainly for larger volume payments uh, it just doesn't doesn't work um so that's that's the first just like we don't know how far it scales uh on top of that you know there's, there's a million ux issues that still need to be worked through you know lightning ux uh is, is great when it works and when it doesn't currently users are basically left in the dark um there's there's still this this world where you know you, yeah the payment didn't work um try again i guess but you've already been trying for a minute and we can't find a route or something, but we're not going to try to explain all the complexities. It's like it, the, the, the UX still has a long ways to go. It, Lightning is too complicated to impose on end users and make them have to even understand the concept of a channel or, you know, the concept of a liquidity network, etc. We've all been working on Lightning stuff for years now, and it still feels like there's so much work to do. Um, and the other problem, of course, is uh, is UX. It, it currently is way too hard to run a Lightning node. The current state of the Lightning network is very, 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 very bad for privacy. Uh, you can discover node balances re relatively trivially with probing. You know, we need uh, payments to randomly fail, maybe, to reduce the effect of probing. We may need to, to charge for upfront fees for payments, which may increase fees across the network, which people don't like. And on top of that, all of these things may or may not work. So we need more academic research to see whether they will work. Of hands here, love a love bit of audience interaction. Who in this room has made a lightning payment or transaction? Oh my God, I think, does everyone have their hand up? Oh no, I think I see two or three. Okay, and who has had a lightning payment fail on them? Okay, slightly, slightly fewer hands, okay. Interesting. Uh, you, you're the data guys. What, what do you make of that? That's impressive. Okay, good. I'm happy. Great. Um, I, I am not. <laughs> it's way too many failures, right? I mean, that's, that's the thing that we want to improve on. I think... David Schwartz, the CTO of Ripple, had a fabulous video today. It's about an hour and 20 minutes long. I'm going to play just the portion towards the end here. He'll take you out on this video. So until I see you again, do take care. Sayonara. Bye-bye. And the, the thing that annoys me the most about the lawsuit, you know, uh, honestly, is that it is effectively acts like a gag. Like there's so much more I would like to say that I can't because, you know, I'd like to talk about the issues in our case. I mean, there are things that I, I do talk about, like on, but sometimes like before the case, before the case, and now I can't. And so that's just... Like, I'd like to weigh in on my opinion of like, of like the type of arguments they're making. And I can't do that. And it's just, it's, it's frustrating to me. Very frustrating. You know, as, a, as an American, as a fellow American, it really, um, what, what hurts me is, uh, from looking at it from the outside is centers of innovation, companies like Ripple and Coinbase, which should be the darlings of our crypto industry in the U.S., you know, are, are encountering these issues. I'm curious, have thoughts on what other countries are going to gain because of this? Is it going to be Singapore? Is it going to be Switzerland? I mean, you know, Binance kind of decided not to go to Singapore as an example, but what countries are going to be the most friendly to crypto going forward? Is it going to be Malta? I mean, I'm curious where, where do you foresee, you know, gaining where, gaining where the U.S. loses? Yeah, much of Asia and um, smaller European countries that are just really hungry for innovation. It's, it is, for me as an American too, it is, it is extremely frustrating. You know, I, I imagine this counterfactual when the early days of the internet, the United States government was like, this is being used to buy child pornography and spread child pornography and finance terrorism and steal state secrets and hack into, you know, power systems. And so we should just prohibit the internet in the United States. Can you imagine? Like, there would still be a Google and an Apple and, and a Microsoft, and th these wouldn't be U.S. companies. I mean, we would have faced a take it or leave it choice with the internet. Can you imagine if, you know, the internet was built by countries that built identity into every packet? I mean, what a different world we would live in. And that's what we're doing with cryptocurrency. We're pushing the innovation to other countries. And those countries, those regulators have a seat at the table. And 
it, it just, yeah, it just as an, as an American, as someone who wants to see, as someone who, you know, I put roots, that we, we, we could have built Ripple in another country, you know, but we're Americans. And, and you look at FTX and Binance, which are thriving, and Coinbase is now, I mean, is severely hobbled. I mean, and the mistake they made was they, they worked with regulators, and they picked the U.S. Right. 